At the ballpark, we are just about set for action here at Huntington Park. I'm Ryan Mitchell, Matt Andrews beside me, and let's get you right to it. The starting lineups brought to you as always by MILB.TV. Clippers fans watch the Indian Stars of tomorrow today with MILB.TV. With all games, both home and road, stream live. The only place to watch the Clippers on your phone or on your computer is on MILB.TV. The Bisons bat first. As they come a call, and Jonathan Davis leads off in center field, followed by Billy McKinney. He'll be in right. Richard Urania is the shortstop batting third. Rowdy Tellez cleans it up at first base. Patrick Kivlahan is the DH in the five-hitter. Andy Burns at third will bat sixth. And the bottom third of the order for the Bisons today, Socrates Brito in left field. Michael De La Cruz the catcher. And the second baseman, Santiago Espinal. Jake Bowers, Kai Tom, and Daniel Johnson from left to right in the Clippers outfield. Yu Chang at the hot corner. Eric Stamets at shortstop. His double play partner is Mark Mathias. Bobby Bradley at first base. Eric Haas will be the catcher. The pitching matchup is brought to you by BJ's Wholesale Club. BJ's beats supermarket prices on national brands, so you can stock up for less. Stop in at any BJ's today. Mention this ad from the Columbus Clippers broadcast and join with a special limited time membership offer. For the Buffalo Bisons, Andrew Sopko is going to get to start. He's had a rough go this year. One and four on the season with a 6.65 earned run average. And uh, he has not faced the Clippers yet this year. He has had uh, fits and starts this season. His last start, he allowed five runs over five and a third innings. Two starts before that allowed four runs, but zero earned. And the one before that, zero runs total. And then one run prior to that. But heading into that start, it was not good. For the Clippers, it'll be Logan Allen, mostly an unknown for Columbus, as he has made one appearance in a Clippers uniform after being acquired from the San Diego Padres in that three-team deal that sent Trevor Bauer to Cincinnati, Bubba Trammell, not Bubba Trammell, uh, Taylor Trammell from the Cincinnati Reds to the San Diego Padres, and everybody else in the deal wound up with the Cleveland Indians, including a couple of big pieces at the Major League, and I mean big, Fran Mill Reyes and Yasiel Puig, the outfielder. The Clippers are now taking the field. Actually, the Boleros de Columbus are now taking the field, led out there by Logan Allen. No record as a Clipper, 11.57 his earned run average. 13 starts in El Paso, AAA for San Diego, 4 and 3 with a 5.15 ERA. In the major leagues, he was 2 and 2. Or excuse me, 2 and 3 in 8 appearances, 4 as a starter and a 6.75 ERA for the left-hander. So, Matt as we uh, as we get ready for this game because El Paso is in the Pacific Coast League, we don't get to see him there. We've only seen him for two plus innings here. There's a lot to be learned about this left-hander. No doubt, and clearly a guy highly regarded as he warms up on the Huntington Park mound. When I see these two teams in Buffalo and Columbus meet up, I, I immediately tie the affiliation to Cleveland. Because right. Buffalo, they had such success while with Cleveland. And in fact, back in 05, the last time they have been to the playoffs, they were a Cleveland affiliate. And now you look at all the success Columbus has had with the Indians and uh, two teams that are very much obviously Columbus leading the division, but Buffalo's in a pennant race right now, five out of the north. And they're looking for that wild card spot as well. Right now, the the top three teams in the South Division are really kind of sitting in the catbird seat in regards to the playoffs. One team's going to win that division, two and three sit in the first and second spots for the wild card. But Buffalo is very much alive in that regard as well. Now you mentioned Buffalo hasn't had a lot of success in recent years. But they've kicked Columbus's tail. The Clippers have not won a season series against these Bisons since 2011. And that year, the Clippers beat everybody, winning the Governor's Cup, winning the national championship. It's just one of those weird things. I couldn't believe the stat. 18 games under 500, Columbus versus Buffalo, since that 11 season started. All right, Logan Allen has gone through his warm-up activities. We're going to start a little bit late. Not entirely sure what kept the Clippers off the field there for a couple of minutes, but they're ready. Allen is ready. He's got his sign. The lefty rocks and fires and throws a fastball at 93 miles per hour over the inside corner for strike one, and we are underway 7-18. Our first pitch, clear skies overhead. Next pitch is high and away, 82 degrees. Winds out of the west at 8 miles per hour, maybe a little bit to the south. 
or excuse me, a little bit to the north of west, rather. It's a gorgeous day. 1-1 pitch is lifted into center field. How about this? Laying out and making the diving catch. His first stint in center field for the Clippers. Ka'ai Tom pulls it in for out number one. Well, he got a great break, Ryan, coming straight in. I didn't think there was any way in the world he was going to get there, and he just like he was springing out off of stilt straight ahead, able to make a backhanded, left-handed catch. You know, I was talking to Bruce Drennan yesterday on his program on Sports Time Ohio, and one of the players he asked me about was Kai Tom. I hear you name-dropping Bruce in the first ah, I love you, Cleveland. <laughs> he asked me about Kai Tom, and... The, the thing that impresses me, and I told him and his audience this as well, Tom plays which, with absolutely no fear. This is a guy who's not a highly regarded prospect. He's you know not one of the top ten guys in Baseball America or MLB Pipeline or any of that stuff. But every moment he has been on the field in the Clippers uniform, and that's all that I can speak to, he has shown nothing but pure confidence. And now he's got another chance. Racing back on a ball that's going to get over his head and off the base of the wall. Tom will fire back in. It'll be a double. Boy, he made a throw from the warning track to second on the fly. But Billy McMillan has a two-base hit. No chance for Tom to get to that one, but getting back on it quickly, making sure he got no worse than a double. Well, Ryan, you, you call so many games here, but this has got to be the early stages of games for center and left fielders has to just be a nightmare with the sun that sets beyond the first base side roof. No doubt about it. Very first game that was ever played here back in 2009. First inning, line drive right to Chris Jimenez, who was playing left field. Had no idea no where clue. it was. And it happens half a dozen times a year. You'll get one right at the left fielder above the roof line, and there's, there's just nothing to be done. Actually, we saw it the last homestand here. The Clippers, and I believe it was Scranton Wilkesbury, each had a run score in the same game because a ball was hit to an outfielder that they lost one, a left fielder for Scranton in the sun, and then Kai Tom actually lost one in the lights in right field that led to a run. Here's Richard Orania with a man at second base and one down, the shortstop. Took the first two out of the zone, the next is high and away, three balls and no strikes. Logan Allen has not had a stellar beginning here to the first three batters. Two hard hit balls and now a 3-0 count. Turns and looks to second, now fires and missed up top for ball four. Well, Allen is a young fella, 22 years of age out of West Palm Beach, Florida. And clearly a guy that the Indians liked with him being included in that trade for Trevor Bauer. You know, the Indians obviously needed outfield help, but almost universally, it was stated that the Indians got a great return for Bauer. First pitch, breaking ball fouled away by Rowdy Telez. I think you'd pull all three teams. They'll tell you they got a good return, and clearly, numerically speaking, the Indians got the quantity of the deal, yep. and I think everybody probably got some quantity. Yasiel Puig is a free agent after this season, but Franmil Reyes is under control for five more years at the major league level. The slider is outside one and one, and again, the young pieces in that deal, including this guy, Logan Allen. San Diego really liked Trammell. This is a guy that was a highly touted prospect in the red system. He's a swing and a foul away by Telez on a 94-mile-an-hour fastball. Wending up to number one in their prospect list, I think. It was close. As a position player, I think he was number one. I don't yeah. know if he was number one overall or not, but, yeah, that was a guy that they really liked. He didn't perform well this year in double-A, his first taste of double-A, and he was hitting around 260 without much pop. One ball, two strikes. Now the pitch, and that is up the ladder, two and two. I don't think the Reds viewed him as a possible center fielder long term. San Diego, there's been some talk that they, they'd like to try him out there. Well, I think in the Reds, they have Nixon Zell out there. They're very comfortable with what they've mm -hmm. seen this year there with him. A lot of talent there and a lot of years of control also. 2 2 pitch, breaking ball down, full count. And that seems to be the new. 
standard for a lot of these teams. Control. How many How years can we pay this guy the minimum? How many years can we maybe keep the salary down in arbitration a little bit? Rowdy Telez is hot. He's hitting well. He's on fire right now, and he takes ball four, a slider up out of the zone. That'll load him up. Well, there's been a hard hit line out, a blistered double, and back-to-back -back walks, and already the dangerous Kivlahan up here with, with Allen struggling and now going to get a visit to the mound by Rigo Beltran. Certainly when the pitching coach has his name mentioned in the first inning, that's rarely a good sign. You mentioned Kivlahan. He leads this team in home runs with 19, leads the team in RBIs with 54. This Buffalo team has had some of the hottest prospect names in baseball come through this year. But for the most part, they're gone. They're up with Toronto, making their impact known there. And you're talking about the, the legacy trio, Biggio, Bichette, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. How about Bo Bichette, by the way? 11 major league games under his belt. He's got an extra base streak of nine games in a row. Longest in the career of Babe Ruth, nine. Nine. Now, let's not go putting cart before horse, but <laughs> it's not bad company. Barry Bonds never did nine in a row. Kivlahan takes outside for ball one. All of his extra base hits, though, are doubles, I believe. This fastball sails high and away to Kivlahan. Two balls, no strikes. That was actually not a fastball. It looked like the fastball because it didn't break. It was a curve. Allen trying to right the ship here. Swing and a miss. That will get him into the count. How big would a double play ball be right here? Well, that would be a scoreless first. And they're positioned that way on the infield. From a mental standpoint, getting out of this jam and having a reset in the second, that would be huge. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Challenged him with a 93-mile-an-hour fastball in the zone. Makes it 2-2. Two and two. Let's see if he comes back with a heater here or goes back to the breaking pitch. Fastball the last two have been right there. Eric Haas lays down the signal, sets up right down Main Street, and he went back to the heater and got the swing and a miss. That good old hardball right there, Ryan. Well, that's that's life in the big city right now in baseball. I mean, these guys, everybody's swinging for the fences. It opens holes, but obviously, listen, if Kivlihan connects with that fastball, with that swing, it's a grand slam. But it's, it's an odds game. It's a numbers game. Play the percentages. Andy Burns now to the plate. Job's still not done. Fastball here misses inside 1-0. Oh. Well, similar to last night. Clippers had, or yesterday afternoon rather, three on nobody out of the nine. Chance to tie or win it. Got nothing. That was a heartbreaker. 1-0 coming. And it's swung on and missed. Doing the fastball. He, and he's living shoulder and up. It's a high fastball. Well, that's, that's where a lot of pitchers, and, and of course, you know, even you go back five years, conventional wisdom, don't miss up, right? In the strike zone or just above it, don't miss up. But the launch angle revolution has made it such that the fastball up, up. is the pitch that gets guys out. And a foul ball gets it to one and two. I got to think we're going to see the fastball here. This is the chess game because you know that. I know that. Right. But so does Andy Burns. <laughs> I'm going to roll the dice. Bison's at all stations here in the top of the first inning. There's a nod from Allen. He's got the sign that he wants. From the high set, he delivers. And there it is. Old country hard ball at 95. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And that will be that. The Bison's load him on a hit and two walks. But come away scoreless. Half an inning in the books. No score at Huntington Park. Here come the Clippers in their half of the first inning. 
Batting order looks like this. Jake Bowers in left field will lead things off. Mark Mathias at second, bat second. Ryan Flaherty third at DH. Yu Chang, the third baseman, is the cleanup man. Bobby Bradley fifth at first. Daniel Johnson sixth in right. Then it's the catcher, Eric Haas, batting seventh. Ka'ai Tom in center bats eighth. And Eric Stamets ninth. He is the shortstop. First pitch is a swinging ground ball to first base. Rowdy Telez has it. Spins 180 degrees and feeds the charging Sopko. And that's a 3-1 to one put away on one pitch. Andrew Sopko. Looking for his second win on the year. It's been a rough go for him. Missoula, Montana native. 24 years of age. 10 starts. 1-4 and four with a 6.65 earned run average. He struggled at home. He struggled on the road. He struggled against left-handers. He struggled against right-handers. You're saying he struggled? I'm saying there have been some low points this year. He did go through a stretch of three starts where combined he allowed only one earned run. But over the course of those starts, he only won a total of nine innings. First two pitches to Mark Mathias, both strikes. Mark batting up in the batting order today. He had a nice series. This pitch is inside as the Clippers took on the Pawtucket Red Sox here. Clippers didn't have a nice series, losing two games out of three. And Matt, as you mentioned, last night, Trailing by a run, heading to the bottom of the ninth. The first three reached, bases loaded, nobody out. You put that one in the win column, don't you? Or at least extra innings. Especially at home. One, two, three, after that they went. And that's your ball game. For Mark Mathias, this is the 44th time he has hit in the two-hole. Or excuse me, check that. He's been at second base that many times. Font is small on here. His 12th game in the two spot in the batting order. He's led off six times. Mostly hitting farther down in the order. He's bat, batted fifth of seven times. 11 times he's been sixth. Most commonly he's been in the seventh spot in the batting order, 19. He's also hit eighth, 12 times, and ninth, 16 times. So this is a guy you put anywhere up and down the order. 2-2 two -two pitch. He swings and misses for strike three. So getting rewarded being pushed up in the order a little bit, but it doesn't work out this time. The font is small. I like that. Yeah. I'm use that. You gotta. It's also a sign for I'm getting older and can't read as as clearly. I tell you what. I get up in the morning. And what's the first thing you do when you get up in the morning? When you you reach over the phone. You look at your phone. You, you look right? at your phone, right? I mean, until I can get the sleep out of my eyes, it is just one big blur. Ryan Flaherty at the plate. First pitch is tapped to second base. That's an easy pickup for Espinal. He'll throw on to first, four to three on the put away. The Clippers go quietly, and we go to the second inning here at Huntington Park. No score. The superstars are here at Huntington Park. They are a fan favorite no matter where they go, the superstars. A varied cast of characters, but Harry Canary is almost always in attendance. Almost always, and usually at the stretch, he'll have a silly string surprise for somebody. The fact that anybody is still surprised by that blows me away. Socrates Brito to lead things off for the Buffalo Bisons here in the top of inning number two, 290 batting average. A dozen homers, 49 batted in, and Logan Allen back to the hill. He put himself behind the eight ball. In the first inning, then pitched his way out of it. There's a bunt. First base side, and that's a base hit. Allen's momentum carried him over toward third base, and the bunt was pushed past the mound. Brito lays one down. He's at first. Nobody out for Michael De La Cruz. It's a weapon. It's not very often used, but it's a weapon. I can't believe I just saw it. I, I love it. It seems like, though, over the last few years, we've seen less and less bunting. Why well, give away a possible out, they think. But there's a fair amount of real estate out there where if they're playing back on the infield, here's another bunt. This one, though, Allen comes to get and throws to first. That's a sacrifice successful. De La Cruz is out one to three. 
That time, the momentum of Allen helped him to get to the baseball. Well, I'm wondering, Ryan, and to your point exactly with the momentum, but I'm wondering if they saw something in the first inning with the way he fell off the hill and thus the first two batters bunting because the bunt by Brito was to the second base side of the mound, and this one is off to the shortstop side by De La Cruz. So Santiago Espinal, his first look at the Clippers. Promoted when Bo Bichette went up to the major leagues. Takes a fastball to the top of the zone for strike one. And it was the fastball that Logan Allen relied upon after the bases were loaded. And he fell behind in the count to Patrick Kivlahan. He said, all right, to heck with this. Here comes the old number one. See what you can do with it. And the answer was nothing. Two strikeouts end of the inning. Throws the off-speed pitch outside for ball one. Uh, excuse me. Yes, ball one, strike one to Espinal. Next pitch is number 30. And it's a weak wave at a high fastball. It was up out of the zone, but it makes the count one and two. Shadows have encompassed the infield. Left field and center still bathed in late day sun, and it is tough right now on Jake Bowers out there. Fastball high and tight at 94, evens the count at 2-2. Two and two. Not a lot of ballparks have the sun set straight on the first base side like Huntington Park does. The pitch is high and away. Cool Ray Field in Gwinnett sets over on that side, and they've got those sweets they kind of ring the ballpark where the sun will get below the roof line and you think you're okay. And then about 15 minutes later, it comes shooting in right through at the yeah. left side defenders. Payoff pitch. Smack deep to left field. Bowers chasing after it. It's over his head and off the warning track. A run is going to score. He fires into second base. The throw is well offline. That's an RBI double for Espinal. One to nothing, Buffalo. Well, you live by it, and sometimes you die by it when you're forced to just throw the ball over the plate to avoid a base on balls. That can be the result. Bunt single, sack bunt, and now an RBI double, and the Clippers are down one to nothing. That is apparently his first triple-A hit. It certainly is his first in 15 at-bats because they wanted that baseball from the first base Clippers dugout. Yeah, and that one, you know, for Espinal, he has struggled since his promotion. Talking with Pat Melicaro, one of the voices of the Bisons, he'd really only had one hard-hit ball prior to that. Here's a pitch high and away to Jonathan Davis for ball one. So it is his first triple-A hit. One he'll remember because it produces a run. Davis, 267 batter on the season. Swings and he chased one down out of the zone to even the count at one and one. So a fastball mid 90s. Off speed coming in 80 ish, 81. Mid 80s breaking ball so far from Allen. Next pitch he has fouled away the heater. You know, what he was doing with San Diego, being that swing man, particularly as a young pitcher, that's not an easy thing to do. No. To your point, not an easy thing to do for a veteran or an older guy, let alone a young guy. 22 years old, a lot of versatility there. Sure, that's one of the things that drew the Cleveland Indians to him. One-two pitch, swung on and missed. Breaking ball, heading down and in on Davis. And he cut over top. That's three strikeouts now for Allen. You know, at just 22, it's not going to be a real long track record in the upper levels of the minors at least. But as a minor leaguer, he's made 90 appearances all told. 84 is a starter. Fashioned a 313 ERA. So his resume is pretty good. Five-year pro already at 22. He's spent a lot of time on buses, getting a good look at the American countryside. 
actually started in the Red Sox system. He was part of the Greg Kimball, Kimball trade that sent him out to San Diego. 0-1. He is hit high in the air to left field and fighting the sun. Jake Bauer started back. Now gets to an angle where the sun isn't directly in his eyes and he comes in to make the catch to prevent any further damage. One run, two hits, one man left aboard. It's one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the second. All right, we go to the bottom of the second inning here. Ryan Mitchell and Matt Andrews bringing you Clippers baseball tonight from Huntington Park. Clippers down a run, Yu Chang, the third baseman in the cleanup spot. Call it coincidence, call it something more. Yu Chang has not hit well batting fourth for the Clippers. See if he can change that. First pitch called a strike on a generous inside corner from Sopko for strike one. Chang is just four for 26 in the cleanup spot. Takes high and tight for a 1 1 count. Before getting slotted fourth in the batting order, he'd been hitting 320 over the last 33 games since coming back from the injured list. Slider just missed the outside corner, and it's 2 and 1 against him. Sometimes there's something to that. Other times it's just purely coincidence. But some guys get caught up in roles, whether they are spots in the batting order, positions defensively, their slot in the bullpen. For some guys it matters, and other guys they don't care. And the average fan might say, well, if he's struggling like that, move him out of the four spot. But the fact of the matter is this might be something the Indians want to see, and it's much deeper than what we want in terms of putting a winning situation on the field. Absolutely. He's going to have some success here. A 3 1 pitch is off the outside corner for ball four. So the Clippers have their first base runner today. And it'll pick up Bobby Bradley. Now, Yu Chang is not alone in that regard. Nobody's hit well for the Clippers in the cleanup spot except for Big Bobby Bradley. Bradley, 48 games, 18 homers, and 38 batted in, batting cleanup. That's a guy who relishes that role takes a pitch up here for ball one left hander with all kinds of power 28 long balls on the season already tied for 10th in a single season in Clippers history he hit the record setting homer for the Clippers the other day swings here and fouls it away most by a Clippers team in any season breaking the 1983 record and that was a team with some big boppers. Brian Dayett set the single season record with 35. Now, Bradley's going to have to hustle to get there. It looked like that record was in serious jeopardy before Bradley's promotion to the majors. Spent almost a month up with the Indians in June. He awaits the 1 1. Here it comes. And it's swung on and missed. 1 and 2 to the big fella. 22 doubles, so 50 extra base hits on the season. In Linfield. The, excuse me, looking for that elusive first triple, right? Yes. <laughs> this is not a good park in which to get it. Swing and a miss for strike three. Bradley is put away on strikes. It'll bring up Daniel Johnson. The Clippers are typically not near the top of the International League in triples, though this year they have hit a fair number. Really about the only place in the yard to triple is to get a weird kick off the right center field yeah. fence, right? Yeah, you can get them there if with the knot holes in the Pedialyte porch, if the ball clangs off one of the corners mm. there where the padding and the wire fence meets, there's a ground ball right side. What a stab by Espinal. Mm. He will spin, pirouette, throw to first, and on the first pitch, Daniel Johnson bounds out to the second baseman. That's a dandy defensive play for out number two. Chang moves to second. But because of the different terrain on the wall in right field, sometimes you can get a weird carom there. But yeah, if you hit one to center around to left field, you're going to be hard pressed to get a triple. Eric Haas knows his way around a home run. He's got 27 of them, one off the team lead. Batting average has dipped considerably since 
the All-Star break. He was for the second year in a row a Clippers All-Star. This year he was the IL Star of Stars. Driving in two runs in the International League's loss against the PCL. Now batting 239 on the season. First pitch, a called strike. Sopko looks to second base, and from the third base side of the slab, he deals a breaking ball. Fouled into the visiting dugout. Kyle Hudson coaching third base tonight. Andy Tracy is the acting Clippers manager with Tony Mancellino away from the club. Over the course of this series, getting a well-deserved break. He'll join back up with the Clippers, and we head down south to Cool Ray Field. Where it'll be anything but cool. Oh, boy. It's, it's bound to be a warm one in mid-August in northern Georgia. And I'm sure not humid at all. <laughs> no. That is a three to four shower city this time of year. 0 2. Hit hard to left center field. Did he get enough? That is going to tie the game. It's going to wind up on the warning track for an RBI double. Eric Haas ties this one at one here in the bottom of the second inning. Well, for Haas, extra base hits have not been plentiful outside of home runs this year. Nine doubles, get this, three triples. He hit two in one game at Victory Field the other day. Well, that's this a triple part. This two-bagger ties it up. Victory you, you Field bet. is a triple part. It is that, <laughs> and they usually are at or near the top of the International League. But not this year. The Indians really don't have that kind of personnel. First pitch to Ka'ai Tom is down, and he tripled twice in a game at Victory Field earlier this season as well, driving in three runs over the two doubles, giving the Clippers the lead both times. Two balls, no strikes against Tom. 310 batting average, two homers, 24 runs batted in. And the pitch swung on and fouled back to the screen, two and one. Tom had a essentially game-winning home run at Victory Field as well, putting it into the first row down the right field corner. He has, boy, just really fit in nicely with the Clippers, offensively, defensively. Long look to second base from Sopko, and the pitch. That is a called strike over the outside corner at 88 miles per hour. And yeah, last I was with you, Clippers were leaving for Indy with a five-game lead. For little, that, little brooms in victory field. That was Never a hurt. big, big series for the Clippers. If that goes the other way mm. and Indy gets the sweep, boy, they've got all the momentum in the world, and things are seeming kind of tight for the Clippers, but instead... They were the ones with the sweep. Here's a swing and a miss. Tom is out, and so are the Clippers. And so they opened up an eight-game lead, and it didn't quite put Indy away, but it is a big, big stepping stone for the Clippers to try and get back to the playoffs. Let's step away here. We'll come back after these words for the third inning. We are all tied at one apiece. More superstars action in between innings here. The Clippers... And their half of the second came back to tie the ball game and won a piece on an Eric Haas RBI double. And so that is where we stand as we go to the third. And on for the play-by-play -play here in the third inning. A good buddy, broadcast partner, Matt Andrews. All right, thanks, Ryan. Perfect night, Columbus. Beautiful night for baseball. We've got sunny skies and a great crowd here, as always, on a Friday night in early August at Huntington Park. Tied at one. And for Logan Allen, he'll get set to go through the heart of the batting order. Three, four, and five for Buffalo. Richard Urania leads it off. He walked in the first. A couple of walks in that inning for Allen, who loaded the bases. First pitch fastball, swung out and missed. Left-handed pitcher to right-handed batter, strike one. Urania switch hitter. 
He homered off of the Clippers in Buffalo. Here's a looping liner into center that's going to drop for a hit in front of Tom. He had ideas of coming straight in, similar to the first batter of the game, Davis, and springing out straight on, but instead that ball was down a few feet in front of him for a leadoff single for Urania. Well, it's good to see that Tom made that decision because sometimes in a game when you make a big play like that, you start to feel maybe a little bit invincible. And he made the smart play there, not selling out because there's nobody behind him no. as the center fielder. There's no backup. Rowdy Telez, the cleanup batter, also walking the first. Lefty to lefty here and a pop-up foul off third. The shift is on uh, the Columbus infield. Three infielders over to the right side with Chang, the third baseman, playing the shortstop spot right now. Outfield swung around to right. Strike one pitch. Inside with a fastball and a quick throw down to first base. Haas guns it down to Bradley, but safely back in Urania. It's a 1 1 count on Telez, who also homered against Columbus in that series in July in Buffalo, three game series. Buffalo having dropped two of three in Toledo, the back end of this six game trip here in Columbus with three. There's a called strike to Telez to run it to a ball to two strikes from Logan Allen. He's walked two, he struck out three, has allowed the one run. The game is tied at one at the top of the third. Allen sets the check of Urania into the plate, and this one's popped up on the left side of the infield. Chang with time to get to the third base bag. He steps on the bag and trickles to foul ground for the catch. One man gone, Telez on the foul to third. One on one out for Patrick Kivlahan and this was the the part of the batting order of the first inning the first time through for Allen where he bared down with three on and one out and got back to back strikeouts. Kivlahan went swinging. Right handed batter takes it up and away ball one. Kivlahan 6 2 223 out of Nyack New York. Former Red. Throw to first, safely standing back is Urania. Infield a double play depth, the ball one pitch, drops in for a called strike, and it's even at 1 1. These two met up in July in Buffalo, as we mentioned, in a three game series. Columbus taking two of three against the Bisons. The 1 1. This one's fouled back and off to the right. It's a ball and two strikes. We talked about Buffalo's lineage in terms of affiliation with Cleveland. Now, of course, Toronto's AAA affiliate. They spent a couple of years with the Mets. That was a disaster. But prior to that, they were locked on with the Indians through 05. And in fact, the 05 year, the last year, Buffalo has had a division champion. 1 and 2. Kivlehan takes a fastball up and away. Two and two from the lefty Logan Allen. Now the entire field in shadows here at Huntington Park. Nearing eight o'clock. This one's in the air down the right field line. Johnson was playing over towards straightaway right. Has to come a long way to foul ground. Out of our view, he went skidding for it, but it's a foul ball up against the padded wall. Now well, that's a hold your breath moment because he went kind of hard into that sidewall. There's very little foul territory down there and he had his eyes mostly on the baseball but realized at the last minute he was running out of real estate. I mean that's padded mm. but that's straight concrete underneath there that padding will help a little bit. But if you're not careful that can do some damage to you. What is it? Maybe two feet to the right of the chalk there until you get to that. Yeah, there's, wall. there's not very much. little room. A 2 2 count with one on and one out, a 1 1 game in the third. Columbus's Logan Allen works, and that one bounces in there, and no advancement. Urania stays at first base. Good job by Haas to pounce on it to the third base side of the plate. Now a full count. 
IL All-Star Eric Haas saving a wild one there. Three and two on Kivlahan. Left-handed pitcher on the mound. Urania at first base. Two bags of the year. You doubt he's running with one out. He's not. The three-two pitch is fouled straight back and over our head. Now to play. And don't give up on that. The fans sitting behind home, they, they know it. You are very well familiar with at Louisville Slugger yes. Field, that sloped roof. The fans there in the upper seating bowl know a foul ball that gets behind them is probably coming back. And they'll often stand and wait on it, and sometimes it won't trickle back down. 3-2 <laughs> again. In the air, hit well center field, but playable. Tom running over to his right towards deep left center, and in front of the 405 marker short of the track, Tom makes the catch for out number two. And Kivlahan, the team leader with 19 homers, just missed one there. That pitch from Allen had just enough late life to get down toward the handle of the bat a little bit. You could tell from the sound. Andy Burns struck out with them loaded to end the first. 53 pitches for Allen as he brings the first one to Burns. That's low a ball. Allen threw 52 pitches in the start at Indianapolis six days ago. As Ryan told you, two and a third innings, three runs, four hits. His 55th pitch today is swung on in a high deep drive to right. Back to the fence, Johnson. He looks up, and that ball's off the scoreboard and gone. A two run home run. An opposite field two run shot by Andy Burns just over the yellow stripe in the wall in right center hit off the bottom of the scoreboard for Burns is 13th and Buffalo's up a pair in the third. First homer Allen's allowed as a clipper. Well here at Huntington Park if if you pitch any significant number of innings you're going to give up home runs that's just Part and parcel of pitching in a hitter friendly yard. The wind is blowing out that way toward right center a little bit. That helped it out. Ball one low to Socrates Brito. And that's one of the challenges that pitchers here in another hitter friendly ballparks that you have to overcome. Ground ball up the middle with the shortstop Stamets was playing that way. Bit of the shift on for the pulled handing, the left handed batting Brito. Stamets the field of the throw to end the inning. Bisons get two and take the lead. Middle of the third, 3-1, Buffalo. Man. 3-1, Buffalo the lead. Thanks to a two-run home run at the top of the third inning by Andy Burns. And now it'll be Stamets, Bowers, and Matthias. 9-1 and 2 for Columbus here in the Home half of inning three off of Andrew Sopko. Right handed pitcher, right handed batting Stamets. And at 232, takes it up and in ball one. Six homers, 32 knocked in. And riding a six game hitting streak in which he's eight for 22. Stamets out of the nine spot. The ball one. It's low, 2 0 oh on our. Huntington Bank IL scoreboard at Huntington Bank doing the right thing means giving our customers simple smart ways to make managing their money easier Huntington welcome three one here Bison's lead the Clippers in the third there's a called strike around the IL tonight Friday night Durham hosting Indianapolis they're in the fourth inning at Durham Bulls Athletic Park seven two Bulls put up seven in the second two one fastball is up all three. Toledo with a full run second at home. They're leading Pawtucket in the third, 4 0. Gwinnett at Scranton Wilkesbury, nothing, nothing in the fourth. Norfolk hosting Syracuse, third inning. Tides hitting, 3 0. The Mets lead. Bouncing ball hit the third. Backhanded and a foul ball by just inches. Left of the bag, deep behind third. Burns went over for the backhand and kicked off the palm of his mitt in a foul ball call. But third base umpire, Scott Urshown. It's a big break for Buffalo right there. If that's a fair ball, it's a runner easily at first and maybe second. Mm. Foul ball. They're in the fourth inning at Frontier Field in Rochester tonight. Rochester and Louisville scoreless. And in the fourth in Lehigh Valley, it's Charlotte three, 
Iron Pigs one. Ground ball second. Played on one bounce by Espinal, who was positioned perfectly. He'll throw Stamets out for the first out of the third. Home half of three. It's 3-1 Buffalo here in Columbus. Jake Bowers grounded at first baseman a pitcher. First pitch hitting in the bottom of the first. Sopko, the right-hander, winding and throwing to the left-handed batting Bowers, and a foul ball bounced at the plate for a strike. Strike one. That was a Sopko off-speed delivery there, and Bowers just a tad out in front, able to dribble it foul. As Ryan mentioned, eight up Columbus in the West on Indianapolis, 15 over 500. Headed for a Western Division championship, it appears. Fastball is high. And it's one on one and obviously the West champ will meet the the South champ in round one wild card and North Division meet. Well, will that open in West territory or in South territory this year Ryan. Or so the know? Clippers cannot win a championship as the West Division champs on home field. So they would open. They would open they would open the championship series here here but the other way around for the first round. Yes. They'd correct. be in South Division soil to first. Start. The well, first three games are at home for the West champ in the first round. In the first round, got it. And if they move on to the second round, the first two games would be at home, and then they would go on the road to either the North or the Wild Card City. Three balls and a strike on Bowers. And I think you have to go back a dozen years before you find an IL team celebrating on home field. Pitches inside, ball four. So Bowers a one on walk tying run will come to the plate and Martin Mathias we spoke of this last week but in the years that I did the Louisville games four times as the West Division champ all four times against Durham and the bats never got out of round one. Clippers of course winning the title in 10 as the wild card. And yeah, the Clippers didn't seem to have a whole lot of trouble with Durham in the playoffs. Matthias takes downstairs ball one to beat the Bulls in the championship round that year after Durham had dispatched Louisville yep. who ran down the Clippers on the final day of the season for the division crown and then the Clippers beat Durham in the first round the next year in as 11. West Division champs mm -hmm. and they went on to beat Scranton Wilkesbury in the finals. Ball one Sopko versus Matthias infield a double play depth with one out the pitch on the way and it's taken inside two and nothing. On Matthias. He homered yesterday was one for three. When the Clippers won the championship in 2015, Durham was not in the playoffs. They beat the Norfolk Tides in the first round. Now that's a rarity. Yes, it is, very much so. With Durham not being in the postseason. Yeah. 2 0. It's called strike, 2 1. That put the Clippers in Indianapolis in the championship series. That was a great five game series. The Clippers, of course, had. Mike Clevenger with that magnificent game. Tyler Holt with a fantastic catch. Ken Schnocky opened the gates for game five. Here's a 2 1. Here's a shot to the gap in left center field that's going to fall for a base hit. Over to cut it off the center fielder Davis. Heading for third base is Bowers, and he's in sliding feet first. That's a single for Matthias, and the Clippers have him at the corners with one out. Now, I talked about it earlier. Matthias has earned this promotion up the batting order to number two in the order. He's had a great season in all regards for the Clippers offensively, defensively, as versatile as it comes. And now a chance for Ryan Flaherty, the RBI leader in this club with 66. Columbus down two with men at the corners, one away. And I guess I. I should say this guy is as versatile as it comes. All four infield positions, and he's pitched. Flaherty takes the ball down. 1 0 from the righty Sopko. But the difference is Ryan Flaherty is a guy with a lot of major league time. He is an established player. Matthias still making his way up the chain. Has been a very pleasant surprise for Columbus this year. Shortstop, Irania cheats up the middle. The pitch down and away. Two and nothing. On Flaherty with an outfield that's honest and 
as deep as you can play pretty much in this yard. Clarity, three out of nine on the homestand. Rounded out his first time. It's a fine play by Espinal at second, ranging to his left. That's a ball down and in. Three and nothing now with Yu Chang on deck. Clarity leads this team in walks. He'll make you work. As a pitcher out on the mound, you're going to have to make a good pitch to get him. And to Ryan's point, 57 walks with six best in the I.O. Three and nothing to count now. As Sopko turns it loose, needing a strike, and a rip into right for a single. That ball will be played by the right fielder McKinney. A run is in, scoring Bowers, heading for third. Matthias, it's three to two, Buffalo. 3 0 green light, Clarity, RBI single to right. Well, that has been a common occurrence for the Clippers, that 3 0 green light. Just about everybody's got it. And the Clippers have had a lot of success being aggressive in that situation. It's, in all likelihood, the best pitch you're going to see. And so why not take a rip at it and try and do some damage? Clarity cashes in, his 67th run batted in, a team lead there, and now Chang, who walked and scored to the second. Still middle of the corners and one out, a run in. The deficit won for Columbus. Righty to righty, runner takes off for second base, Clarity, and a foul ball back. On a little hit and run here by Columbus. Andy Tracy, as Ryan mentioned, the acting skipper tonight and for the weekend. And they start Flaherty, and a Chang foul spoils the play. Gentle breeze blowing straight away center. Sopko checks first, comes to Chang. Ground ball in the hold at shortstop. Backhanded by Urania. Throw it to second one. Turn it to first. A double play. Urania, Espinal, and then Telez. A 6 4 3 turn off the double play bat of Yu Chang. The Clippers get one, trail by one as we go to the fourth in Columbus. Our Scott's lawn care kid of the game, Aiden, helping out the ground crew. Scott's Turf Builder triple action kills weeds, prevents crabgrass, and strengthens wheatgrass. One application, triple action. This is a Scott's Yard. With Ryan Mitchell, I'm Matt Andrews back at Huntington Park. We're on to the fourth inning here in Columbus with the Clippers trailing 3-2 to, to Buffalo. Michael De La Cruz, the catcher and eight batter, steps in from the right side to lead it off against the lefty Logan Allen. 57 pitches through three for Allen. First pitch of the fourth is in for a called strike. De La Cruz put down a sacrifice bunt in the second inning. The pitch just a bit away. It's a ball to strike, even up on De La Cruz with Espinal and then Davis. 8 9 and 1 in the Buffalo fourth. The 1 1. He went on a high fastball, tried to check head high and could not. 1 and 2. Buffalo run in the second. Columbus answered, tying it up. Bison's two in the third. Clippers one in the third. Now the three infielder alignment to the left side of the infield as the pitch misses Loader De La Cruz. That was on a one and two. So at two strikes, they shift the infield. And now it's a 2 2 count. And the break even. Swing and a miss. He came up and in with a fastball to blow away De La Cruz. One gone. Fourth strikeout. For Logan Allen. Santiago Espinal, the batter now. He had an RBI double to get the scoring started in the second. Lefty to righty. And the first pitch is up ball one. Espinal's RBI doubled in the second. His first triple A hit in 15 at bats. This one skied fouled off first, and that'll settle into the seats here at Huntington Park, about halfway up above the Clippers' first base dugout. Another great crowd here tonight. Yesterday, 10,000 plus. Great gathering on just a picturesque evening in central Ohio. It'll be a 1 1 from Allen with one out. That's down and in. Two balls and a strike. 
Top of the order and Jonathan Davis waiting on deck. The pitch. In there for strike two, two and two. Both of these clubs last night, or in Columbus's case yesterday afternoon, right in the thick of it late. In fact, Buffalo led by a run in Toledo in the eighth before a five spot with the Mud Ducks. Two and two on a foul ball back. It was a one run game until that five run inning last night, of course, in their loss to Toledo. And the Clippers losing by a run here yesterday afternoon to Pawtucket. Here is the 2 2, tie ball three. But these are the top two teams in the International League in terms of one run record. Both are outstanding in one run games. Payoff here in the air, on the middle of the diamond. Second baseman Matthias calling. And he'll make the catch behind second for out number two. <laughs> Buffalo 20 and 8 in one run games, best record in the IL. The Clippers are 19 and 11 in one run game, second best. Two outs, here's Jonathan Davis. Nothing going right now in the Buffalo fourth inning. Allen's 70th pitch drops down for ball one on a breaking pitch. Davis is 0 for 2 in the game. Lining out on the first, striking out, swinging in the second. There's a drive to right field. Going back, Johnson. He's at the warning track. Leaps up and makes a catch. Short of the wall and right. Able to go up and haul it in. First time in the game. The Bisons have gone in order. Home fourth coming up. Buffalo three, Columbus two. Fourth inning about to begin, home half at Huntington Park. Three two, Buffalo, the lead over Columbus. Bradley Johnson Haas to face Andrew Sopko, who has thrown 47 pitches through three. He struck out Bradley swinging in the fourth. Right handed pitcher, left handed batter. And the first one's a fastball that's up for ball one. Three Buffalo infielders to the right side. Burns, the third baseman, playing back at shortstop. Outfield allowed around to the right for the pull hitting Bradley. And the ball one pitch is in the air. Center field hit well and carrying to left center field at the warning track. Leaping up Davis, the center fielder, got it. The wind is slightly blowing out to center, and it got a little bit of a boost there. Still not quite enough. Davis able to leap short of the wall and haul it in. Bradley in a bid for his team leading 29th, just misses. One out. Daniel Johnson, DJ Johnson, right? Ground out into second. Left-handed batter. Sopko fires a first pitch taken for a strike. Strike one. Well, Johnson's average sits right around 300 going into play. He's a 340 hitter of the year against righties. Waves at that one. Grounded out in the second. He's down two strikes. Open the year at Akron. Here's an 0-2 from Sopko. It's way high, a ball and two strikes. Thirty-nine games for the Rubber Ducks. Hit 253, but with 10 home runs at double A. And came to Columbus in late May. The ball one two strike pitch is fouled out of play to the left. Playing the futures game in Cleveland. The one out fourth inning batter. 3 2 the count. Bison's lead at bottom of the fourth. Sop go to the plate with a one and two. Fastball up and out. Two and two.
Now the Bison's right-hander winds and brings the break even. Johnson takes high ball three. Good at bat here for Johnson. He's worked the count full, and we'll see a payoff pitch with Eric Haas on deck. I had mentioned the superstars are here tonight. Entertainment act that has thrilled many uh, thousands of fans throughout this league. Fastball delivery fouled back, and it holds on Johnson at three and two. Perfect night for some superstars, some Clippers baseball, some Graders ice cream. Just ask my broadcast partner. That black raspberry, yeah, go ahead and talk. That black raspberry chip now. 3 2 pitch. Fouled again. This one deep down the left side. It's becoming a bad trend for me, filling in here, working with you and averaging one of those a game. We got some pretty good ice cream spots, as I think, from around the league and in the travel over the years. The one out, 3 2 to Johnson. Downstairs, ball four. So a one out walk will get Eric Haas to the plate. Tying run off of the Clippers, one out of the fourth. Well, I, I when do. you get one of those cups of ice cream, it is criminal to let that thing melt past the point of enjoyment. So you've got a very limited amount of time. So I, I hope you'll excuse me for having delved into that. I certainly will would prefer graders over a Toffs from Toledo. Now, I do enjoy some Toffs Toledo ice cream. As do I. Um, I grew up on that. There's a great little ice cream joint there at the ballpark in uh, Scranton. Oh, yes. Back Gingling. there behind you to the right, yes. Oh, I saw you tweeting about that. Oh, that's right, yeah. I did. How was it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I would <laughs> listen. It's it's ice cream, so it's it's strong to quite strong. I was very happy with my selection that day. Haas with an RBI double back in the second. Tying run at first and a throw that way to get Johnson back. DJ with six bags and 11 tries on the year, and they're aware of that. He's the two-out base runner. I am traditionally a I, I like strawberry ice cream, but you know, traditionally vanilla and chocolate and those types of things. For the graders, the raspberry chocolate chip is transcendent. The black raspberry chip oh. is the best. Popped up. First base side. Down the line comes Telez. The first baseman moves now equidistant between the mound and first base. And Telez makes the grab. And now there are two outs. The runner at first base. On Haas's pop to first. Kai Tom now. Tom struck out swinging to end the second. First pitch, right hander versus left hand batter, and it's low ball one. Tom, one for four yesterday. Don't let his size fool you. As at 5'9, 190, as Ryan mentioned earlier, just plays a bit reckless, goes all out. Reckless being a good term, and there's a bomb. Hit back into right center field, and that's a reckless home run. Two run shot out of here to right center. Kai Tom gives the Clippers their first lead of the game. He got every bit of that one. He certainly did. It is a compact and powerful Kai Tom. Not a ton of height, but those watching on Clippers TV can see thick legs. He can really create some torque. He's already set a career high in home runs this season. And why well, I keep saying it, it almost feels repetitive at this point, but there is not a moment too big for Kai Tom. Clippers have scored four in their last three turns of the plate. Grab the lead 4-3, still batting fourth inning, showing bunt statements, and he takes it high ball one. Third of the year for Tom. And that was a blast. Just to the left of the 365 marker, but way above the wall and over the fence in right center. Breaking pitch, cut on a miss. Stamets is even at 1 1. 
So the Clippers play with the lead now. That's downstairs. Two balls and a strike on Stamets. Bradley fly to center to start the fourth. Johnson drew the walk, but then Haas pops to first. Tom plays two out long ball. 13th homer. Sop goes a lot on this Triple A season. There's a line drive to the gap in right center field. A hit over to get it to center fielder Davis. He's in the alley. He'll cut it off and hold Stamets to a single. Stamets with a slice single to right center to bump the hitting streak to seven in a row. Second now, third time through for the Clippers against Sopko, and they've been able to make some nice adjustments here and not only grab the lead, but now look to play the old game that George Grant loved to call to add on. Jake Bowers has walked and scored officially nothing out of one. Left-handed batter from Sopko, the righty. Breaking balls away, ball one. Yeah, those are oftentimes the more important runs for the sake of a game. You kind of step on the throw to the opponent a little bit, break their will. Kyle Nelson's been warming into Columbus Penn. Figures we'll see him probably in the fifth. The pitch count for Columbus daughter Logan Allen has exceeded 70 or right at 70. Well, he's still stretching back out, being a swing man for San Diego, still trying to get him fully acclimated back into a rotation. Another throw to first, safely back Stamets. And listen, once he gets there, don't be surprised if at some point the Cleveland Indians come a call. They've used a lot of arms up there this year, beset by injuries. Bowers takes a strike. Did not pull the trigger on that pitch at the letters, and it's 1-1. Los Valeros de Columbus. Flippers and Bisons on this Friday night in Huntington Park. The 1 1. Foul back and off to the left. And it's a ball, two strikes on Bowers. It was option following the, the trade that helped get Allen here to Columbus. Looks down at third where Kyle Hudson rolls the signs. Sopko glances over his left shoulder and now sets neck high with a pause. Now the pitch, a swing and a miss on a fastball up the head. Bowers is gone. The inning is over, but Tom's two-run home run to right center has given Columbus the 4-3 lead as we go to the fifth. It's now time. The superstars entertaining here at Huntington Park. The kid that ran the bases then taunted the superstar performer has been swallowed up. We're on to the fifth. New pitcher for Columbus, Kyle Nelson, Logan Allen through 71 pitches. Cannot win, cannot lose. Nelson on for Columbus, back with a play-by-play. -play. Here's Ryan Mitchell. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Kyle Nelson, fellow left-hander of Logan Allen, takes the hill. Last time out, a scoreless inning against the Pawtucket Red Sox. Start of the year in Lynchburg, eight games for the Hillcats. All the hits he gave up were singles in high A. Did not give up an extra base hit. Then promoted to double A, 23 games for the Akron Rubber Ducks, 26 innings. Allowed nine earned runs over that time on just 17 hits. He struck out 36 batters in 26 innings. Left on left matchup here. McKinney takes outside for ball one. Billy McKinney, one for two with a double. Clippers all of a sudden on top, four to three. Kai Tom with a two run home run. Instant offense. That has been the calling card of the Clippers this year. Another pitch outside, two and oh. Nelson, 6'1", 175 pounder out of San Francisco, California, just 23 years of age. Throws the 2-0, and he missed it high. Three balls, no strikes. 
So Logan Allen. Three runs all earned, five hits, couple of walks and four strikeouts. It was an uneven start for him today. He gave up a double and walked two in the first to load the bases. But pitched his way around that, striking out two batters, challenging a couple of big home run hitters with fastballs, struck out Kivlahan and Burns. And the next pitch is outside on 3-1. It's ball four. McKinney takes first as the leadoff man. Allen then allowed one run on a couple of hits. In the second inning, the sacrifice bunt mixed in. Andy Burns got the better of him then in the third with a two-run home run. But Allen finished strong, putting the side down in order in the fourth inning as he continues to build up that pitch count and inning count. First pitch to Richard Arania, a strike. The next is off the outside corner, a breaking ball in and out of the mitt of Eric Haas. And it's one and one. Rowdy Telez in the on-deck circle. Urania today has not been retired. Walked in the first, singled and scored in the third. Middle infield in double play position looking for that sharply hit ground ball. The one one swing and a miss. Breaking ball heading into the back foot. And Urania swung over top of it. Boy, a double play ball would be great for a lot of reasons. Puts two outs in the inning, of course. That's the most obvious, but Rowdy Telez in the on-deck circle. That's a guy you want the bases empty in front of. Throw goes to first, and the runner's back. We'll check the Major League scores in this inning, brought to you by Huntington Bank, proud title sponsor of Huntington Park, the home of the Clippers, of course. The game on Clippers fans' mind. Here's a ground ball, softly hit. On the third base side, it's not a double play ball. The only play for Chang is to first. He'll make it there in time with a 5-3 to three put away of Urania. McKinney moves on to second base. He's in scoring position for Telez. Clippers fans mostly concerned with that Cleveland Indians game in Minnesota. Indians held on by their fingernails for a victory last night in the Twin Cities to pull to within a game of the Twinkies in the AL Central. And right now it's scoreless in the top of the second. Parent club of the Buffalo Bisons. Toronto Blue Jays hosting the Yankees tonight. Telez swings and it's a high fly ball to deep left field. Back on it is Bowers at the warning track. He'll make the catch. Fires into third. Boy, the runner had designs on moving up. But Bowers made a great throw in. And so putting on the brakes mid-go was McKinney. He heads back to second, two away. Well, off the bat, I thought that one had a chance to go. The wind has trickled to almost nothing. So Bowers got back to the spot, set himself up to make the catch, and then, as a byproduct, set himself up to make a good throw back to the infield. That's heads up baseball. Two down now for Kivlahan. Blue Jays leading the visiting Yankees, 6-1. to one. All runs in that game have come on homers. There's a swing and a miss and an off-speed pitch. Nelson had Kivlahan out in front, 0-1. Elsewhere, it's a final now from Chicago. The A's blank the White Sox, 7-0. Astros up 2-0 in the bottom of the fifth at Baltimore against the Orioles. Angels and Red Sox, three apiece at Fenway, top of the fifth inning. Here comes the 0-1. No, a spin around and a look to second base, but no throw. At Great American, he's done it again. Aristides Aquino with his fourth home run. Yesterday, he hit what is tied for the hardest hit ball in the majors this year. I believe it was 118.3 miles per hour off the bat. His third major league homer. Here's a swing and a miss, another off-speed pitch, 0-2. Well, he has a two-run shot today. His fourth, and the Reds lead 3-1 at home against the Cubbies. I read today where that was the hardest hit home run since they recorded that velocity by a Red ever. Do you yeah. know who was number two? The man at the plate, Kivlahan. Really? Patrick Kivlahan. How about that? Well, we know he can hit it hard in a long way. That is, that's surprising. Uh, it was a shocking stat, absolutely. 
One two the count Tigers at home lead three to one against the Royals. Top of the sixth inning nothing settled at City Field in New York bottom five Nats and Mets three apiece and the Mets going to lose ever. There's a soft line drive to right field coming on and bobbling but hanging on to make the catch is Daniel Johnson it wasn't pretty but it was effective and it's out number three. As a result, the Bisons are kept off the board here in the top of the fifth inning. Halfway through regulation frames, the Clippers have a 4-3 lead. Bottom five of the best ballpark in the minors, Huntington Park, the home of the Clippers, and the site of the first game of this three-game weekend series against the Buffalo Bisons. Clippers took two out of three against Buffalo at newly christened Salem Field. Mark Mathias at the plate takes a first pitch up and in Mathias singled in the third he's one for two. Andrew Sopko out for his fifth inning of work has allowed four runs so far three walks. Breaking ball here is down four strikeouts five total hits including a two run home run off the bat of Kai Tom that turned the Clippers three to two deficit into a 4 to 3 lead. 2 0 pitch is a strike called over the outside corner. The only major league score I didn't get to is down in Miami where the Braves lead the Marlins 4 to nothing. Bravo is trying to put the NL East to bed. Matthias swings and fouls away the 2 1 make it 2 and 2. There's a lot of haves and have nots in terms of wins around the majors this year. And the have nots are some of the have and notest that we have seen in a lot of years. I mean, there are some bad baseball teams in the major leagues in 2019. There's a swing and a pop up back behind home plate. De La Cruz gets rid of the mask, but this one is a souvenir. Hits the guide wire that holds up the net behind home plate. I think that's only about the second or third time in the 11 years now this beautiful ball yard. I've seen that happen. New York New York Yankees lead the East by ten and a half games. They have won nine in a row. Tampa Bay has won seven of ten and have lost ground. Next pitch 2 2 is just wide full count. Tampa Bay right now does have the second wild card spot. Boston five and a half games out of the wild card. Boy are the Red Sox in bad straights right now. They have lost a lot of games recently. Which is swinging a ball hit high in the air deep to right center field. Davis chasing. He will get there to make the catch on the warning track. That ball had some takeoff. Some backspin put it deeper than Davis thought it was going to be but he's able to get there to make the catch. For out number one, that'll bring up Ryan Flaherty, an RBI single in the third. Toronto, the parent club of the Bisons, 30 and a half games out of first place. And as far back as they are, they can't even see Baltimore in the rearview mirror. First pitch, he chased a breaking ball down and in, strike one. Baltimore, 37 and a half games out of first place. They are terrible. And they're not even the worst team in the American League. That belongs to Detroit. Motor City Kitties, 34 and 78, a 304 winning percentage. Saw a stat the other day that they're on pace to have the worst home winning percentage since I think the 1930s. They thought that 03 team was bad. Minnesota, of course, leads the Central at 70 and 45. The Indians, 69 and 46, just one game back. They've won three in a row. While well, the Twins have lost three straight. White Sox 18 and a half back, Kansas City 29, and the Tigers 34 and a half. Here comes the 0-2. Inside. Brushed them back at 90 miles per hour. Out west, it's all Houston. Astros are 75 and 40. Oakland currently tied for the top wild card spot at 66 and 50. It's a check swing outside and excuse me they are tied for the second wild card spot with Tampa Bay the Indians have the top wild card spot right now Texas 16 and a half out of first the Angels 19 and a half back in Seattle 27 and a half 20 games under 500 
2-2 to Flaherty. Check swing. Did he go again? Doesn't matter. Home plate umpire called it a strike. Flaherty can't believe it. He wouldn't have believed it. if. And he's holding his bat up saying, listen, the pitch is this high. Well, you're not allowed. Now he holds it up to his eyebrows. I can't believe he's still in this ball game. I can't believe he was rung up. Well, yes. Okay, so, <laughs> so there are a couple of things that are hard to believe. And my guess is, and the home plate umpire, it was a cold third strike. And... Flaherty is right. It came up above the navel. Home plate umpire punched him out. Didn't even rule on the check swing. Ball was up here, he said. He could yeah. read his lips. Well, and you're not allowed to argue balls and strikes. So maybe Ryan Wills realized that maybe his strike zone was a bit too high, and that's why he didn't give Flaherty the heave ho. And if so, good for him. Absolutely. So Ryan Flaherty is out on strikes. Yu Chang is up. He takes a 1-0 pitch inside. Two balls and nothing. Two outs. Base is empty. Clippers ahead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. By a 4-3 margin. Chang waits. Sapko deals. And it's a hard ground ball to third. In between hop. That's a nice grab by Andy Burns. He'll throw across the diamond and retire his counterpart, Yu Chang for out number three. The Clippers go quietly and we go to the sixth. It's 4-3 Columbus over Buffalo. The sun has set, but the superstars are shining bright here on the first base side at Huntington Park. 4-3 Clippers on top as we go to the sixth inning. Andy Burns just made a nice defensive play. He's hit a two-run home run. It's been a nice game for him already. And he will lead things off. Six, seven, and eight in the Buffalo batting order. In this frame, we take a look at this date in Clippers history. It's brought to you by Donato's. Now Donato's get $2 off. Off at five cheese pizza, large size, or any large pizza. When you use promo code LARGE, order with the app or at Donato's.com. That's the way you do everything these days, isn't it? Use the app. Go to the dot com. First pitch to Burns, a big empty swing. Nelson back out there for a second inning of work. And it's 0-1. We'll go back to 1982. At that point in Clippers history, the 83 club had not yet set the since surpassed home run record. Swing and a miss by Burns again on a breaking ball 0-2. On August the 9th, the two-run single in the 11th inning. Courtesy of Donnie Baseball, mm. Don Mattingly pushed the Clippers past Syracuse 5-3. to three. He would play 130 games in the outfield for the Clippers in 82. 1983, he was made a full-time first baseman playing 43 games for Columbus before getting called up to the bigs for good. He would win nine gold gloves at first base, second most in Major League history behind Keith Hernandez. Mm. There was a second spitter. Syracuse back in the early 80s, were they the Sky Chiefs? I think at that point still? they were still probably the Chiefs. I don't know if they had made the transition to the Sky Chiefs at that point. Mm. They were the Chiefs, then the Sky Chiefs, then the Chiefs again. And now rechristened with a new affiliation, the Syracuse Mets. 1-2 pitch. High chopper to the shortstop. Gloving it, Stamets is fired to first. Is in plenty of time for out number one. That has reversed the trend around the International League in recent years. The Scranton Wilkesbury Yankees were rechristened, dropping the Yankees moniker, though not the affiliation, as the Scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders. The Gwinnett, formerly Braves, still affiliated with Atlanta, but now known as the Stripers. So the trend was to go away from the parent club name. Syracuse has latched on to it. Are they still the M Braves in Mississippi? They are indeed. Okay. And the Rome Braves. Okay. But those two teams, while still in the south, and in the case of Rome, still in the state of Georgia, do not have to deal with the confusion that reigned. Oh, one pitch here is fouled away by Brito, 0 oh, 2, because the Gwinnett Braves were in direct competition, if you could call it that, with the Atlanta Braves in the media market when you're talking about advertising. Come see a Braves game. Oh, which Braves team is that? There was actually, believe it or not, confusion. People would buy tickets for one, show up at the other ballpark, and it went both ways. There's a high fly into a tough sky in right field, and Johnson has no idea where it no is. No clue. 
Racing out is the second baseman, Matthias. He can't quite get there. I mean, he went 80 feet into the outfield grass, and that's why I said what I said. A tough sky right now. The ball got above the angle of the lights, and D.J. Johnson had no idea where the baseball was. He was standing stock still. He lost it on the way up, so there really wasn't even an opportunity for him to head in the last known direction. And Matthias went sprinting out, and darn near got there for the play. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's just a tough sky, and people yeah. might think, well, what's what's so tough about it? Well, it's, to Ryan's point, it's, it's the angle of the lights, the way that that ball raised above it. Once the ball gets above the angle of the light shining down to the field, it just disappears when the sky is this color. You can't see it. And again, if, and that ball also, here's another thing that was working against DJ there. It was hit directly at him. So you do not get a sense of an angle. Should I go to my left? Should I go to my right? So that's just an untenable situation for him there. And it turns into a double for Socrates Brito and Michael De La Cruz at the plate. First two pitches out of the zone. Two balls, no strikes. There is activity in the Clippers bullpen now. I believe that's James Karinchak. Here's a ground ball to the shortstop and terrible base running is going to help out the Clippers. I don't know what in the world Socrates Brito was doing, but the throw from the shortstop goes to third, and he's out 6-5. to five. That's a bad mistake. It wasn't even close either. It was One such run an easy game. play for Stamets to make to third. And we are going to get a pitching change here after the second out. So in the scorebook, that one goes 6-5 to five for the, the put out at third. A fielder's choice. We'll put De La Cruz at first with two down, but before Santiago Espinal can come to the plate, we've got a preferred wireless call of the bullpen. PW Stores, a preferred sprint retailer, and the official wireless carrier of the Columbus Clippers. Go to pwstores.com to find the location nearest you. We're back after this. Clippers on top, 4-3. to three. Here's the hard-throwing right-hander James Karinchak on in relief with a man at first and two away in the Bison's half of the sixth inning. Santiago Espinal to the plate. He had an RBI double back in the second inning. He's one for two. Clippers lead it by a four to three count. Karinchak was flat and mowing him down to begin the 2019 season. A ball, double A, triple A. Here's a first pitch, fastball at 95, fouled back, 0-1. Then he had a hamstring injury that put him on the shelf for a lengthy stint. He actually had a setback with another injury. And since coming back from the injured list, his velocity hasn't been quite as high. He was throwing 97-98. He's been 95-96, occasionally 97 since his return. Another foul ball back. This one's 96 and he has sported a pretty good breaking ball to go with it, a good combination. And he's exciting. Cleveland Indians are very excited about him. Drafted Karen Shack back in 2017 in the ninth round, so it's been a quick rise up to the minor league system. 0-2. And he came with a breaking ball but left it up out of the zone. I don't know if it's his delivery or the way he falls off the mound, but when I see it, I see a little bit of John Rocker in the way he kind of violently twitches yep. towards the plate. He's got a somewhat similar setup as well. Doesn't actually bend necessarily at the waist, just kind of hunches over. A big bend in his back as he gets ready to deliver the pitch. He missed again with a breaking ball, two and two. But yeah, it is a, it is a fits and starts violent delivery that can give him some deception as well. Two, two. Back to the heater, and why not? Swing and a miss, strike three. Went up out of the zone. Espinal chased it, and that'll do it for the Bisons here in the sixth. Clippers coming up after this, leading four to three. Out right of the sixth inning here at Huntington Park. It's a beautiful evening in the Arena District. Glad to have you along with us. I'm Ryan Mitchell. Beside me, Matt Andrews. Clippers with a 4-3 lead. That makes it all the better. If they win tonight, they will guarantee a season split with the Bisons. Only six head-to-head -head matchups. Clippers have not won the season series. If you didn't hear it earlier, since 2011. Here's Bobby Bradley. 5-6-7 due up for Columbus. 
Andrew Sopko still on the hill, but the Bisons are going to scramble the bullpen. First pitch a strike to the big first baseman. Next offering is a breaking ball swung on and missed. It's number 71 down to the bullpen. I don't see a 71 on the roster. Oh boy, Bobby Bradley just drilled the baseball foul into the seats. And fortunately, it hit off a seat back. And the, <laughs> the fellow who was sitting in that seat leaned forward, the ball hit the seat back and carried back out onto the field. He just stood up and waved to the crowd to say, I'm okay. Because that ball was humming. 0 oh 2 now against Bradley. The pitch. Just off the inside corner. Sopko thought he had him struck out. We're being told it is Danny Young who has increased his jersey number by four. He was listed as number 67, but he's wearing number 71. 1 2 pitch to Bradley off the outside corner. So it's two and two now. Triangle shift on against Bradley, the second baseman into right field. Swings and it's a ground ball that way. Broken bat picked up, dropped by Telez. Now a race to the bag. The throw is high and safe is the call. Boy, it looked to me like Sopko got onto the bag before Bradley did. And Bobby ran straight into him, gave him a bear hug to carry him away. I thought maybe he was going to lock it up and suplex him. We'll get a look at the replay here. Jalez made the feed and it was high. Oh my. Oh boy, that's Not a Clippers even catcher. Oh, Clippers catch a big break there. He and needs to get help. <laughs> now we're going to get a conversation with the umpires. And it would not surprise me if this call is overturned. Bobby Meacham came out and said, hey, get together with the guys because all that humanity racing your way might have impacted your sight line. And so the four-man umpiring crew all talking to each other on the infield grass on the first base side. Now the replay showed clearly that Bradley was out. Well, if we had replay at this level, they wouldn't even need to send it to New York. Correct. But we don't. No. And, and to your point, this is all coming at that umpire making the call. So you don't know what might have been in his way or perhaps even what he thought he needed to do to get out of the way. Well, yeah, several uh, personal safety and self-preservation has to factor into this a little bit. Now, the fact that this conversation has taken a long time could indicate any number of things, but most likely somebody is trying to ask around, hey, did anybody see anything definitive? I'm sure he got him is what second base umpire looks like is telling Tosi is telling Addington. Yeah. Look. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Now, for the sake of the Clippers, obviously, we would love this call to stand. But why, why is it taking so I, long? I don't Make know. a call. I mean, either are they going to call him safe? Oh, wow. Clippers get a huge yep, break. Yep, take it. And we'll see if they can capitalize upon it. Now, Bobby oh. Meacham is going to continue this argument because I think he knows that one of the umpires said I had a better angle on it and I saw what happened. But they are not going to overturn this call. And now the home plate umpire Ryan Wills is explaining the situation to him. Ryan Addison made the call at first base. Crew chief Alex Tosi is at second. Skyler shown at third today. A four man umpiring crew. And and there doesn't appear to be a vociferous argument going on here between Meacham and Wills. It's but not again, even close. As we look at the replay, the throw was high, but the catch was made. And Sopko came down on the bag before Bradley did. And now we're back to Ryan Addison, the first base umpire, back in on the conversation. And now 
Meacham's been out there long enough that it makes me feel like he's he's out there to make a point. Well, it just whatever happened, he gave up the ghost. He's heading back to the dugout, and the Clippers will have that man at first base. And DJ Johnson to the plate. Well, now the question is, did they give him a base hit or is it an error? I think they've got the error up on the board there, so E3, I'm sure, will be the call. Middle infield and double play position. And the first pitch to Johnson is down for ball one. Score update, the Cleveland Indians. A one to nothing lead on the road against Minnesota. Fran Mil Reyes coming through with an RBI single. And you have to feel good for that guy because he had struggled badly. You could, you could just see every time he was at the plate, he was pressing, gripping that bat too tight. And for a guy that size, he's liable to turn it into sawdust doing that. He is a big, big dude. There's a pitch in the dirt, but it skips up the first baseline. Bradley not taking any liberties. Last time the Tribe tied atop the first this year. Do you remember? I looked it up today. It's been a while. I would guess May 5? April 27. Ooh. So about a week before that. Last time they were even. That. Well, Minnesota jumped out of the block so quickly. 2-0 pitch is swung on, popped up, third base side foul. That'll reach the seats. Minnesota was easily the surprise team of baseball, and I guess maybe still is. Nobody expected them to do much of anything. In fact, nobody expected the Central to do much of anything, period. The consensus was that the Indians had the best rotation and a good enough bullpen that a mediocre offense should be able to win that division going away. 2-1 pitch popped up. That's back behind home plate out of play. 2-2. Two and two. Well, the rotation suffered injury after injury after injury. And all that kept on happening is the Clippers would feed a starter up to the major leagues and he would succeed and then the next guy and then the next guy and then the next guy. And the bullpen has been the best in the American League in terms of ERA. Here's a broken bat flare in the right center field. Long run for Davis. He will get there to make the catch for out number one. Good running catch by the center fielder. One down for Eric Haas. Now an RBI double for Haas back in the second inning. Four to three. Clippers on top. Clippers got to, or excuse me, the Cleveland Indians got to within a game of Minnesota and social media everywhere. Big strutting going on. We're in the rearview mirror. And then Minnesota proceeded to string some wins together while the Indians stumbled, made it again a four-game lead. Haas takes a strike on the outside corner. Now the Tribe are right back behind Minnesota, playing that team for including today the next three games. They beat them yesterday. And now the Twins are without one of their biggest guns. Nelson Cruz is on the injured list. What is it, going back the last 10 years, Cruz has the most home runs in, in the majors? Is that right? I think he and Edwin Encarnacion have traded back and forth. One one pitch. Hit on the ground to the shortstop. That could be two. Six to four, four to three. Double play and a makeup call, I think, at second base because it looked like Espinal came off the bag before he had the baseball. But sometimes things have a way of evening out. Clippers still lead four to three. We go to the seventh inning, and Matt Andrews has the call after this. Four three Clippers have the lead on to the seventh inning here at Huntington Park. James Karinchak came on and struck out Santiago Espinal, the nine hole hitter to end the sixth. And now the Bison's down a run. We'll get the top of the batting order up off of Karinchak. Third Clippers pitcher of this game. Logan Allen, Kyle Nelson. And now Karinchak. Nelson an inning at two thirds, no runs, a hit, one walk. 
Jonathan Davis to lead it off for Buffalo. He's 0 for 3. Right handed pitcher, right handed batter. First pitch, top of the seventh. And a breaking ball drops in there for a called strike. Karen Jack missed a little over two months on the disabled list with the right hamstring strain. Pitches high, one ball, one strike. He opened the year with Akron. Ten appearances, no runs in ten innings. The first month of the season. The one one. That's in there for a called strike, and it's a ball and two strikes. Davis McKinney and Urania for Buffalo. It's 4-3 Clippers. They have the seventh inning lead here in the opening game of the three-game series. Fastball from Karen Shack at 95 misses up two and two. Bisons have a right-hander throwing now in their bullpen as the 2-2 is fouled back and out of play to the right. Neil Ramirez from the Clipper warming for Buffalo. Now the 2 2 again. Swing and a miss on a high fastball for the first out of the inning. Second K to the first two batters. Karen Check is faced. Six strikeout for Columbus pitching and the batter with one outs Billy McKinney. You look like the young man that was out racing the superstars earlier. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> McKinney one for two is walk. Left handed batter takes high from the righty ball one. Buffalo a run on the second two in the third the Clippers one on the second one on the third and then two in the fourth inning. And there's a call strike. McKinney now with the Urania on deck. They recycle the. Pitch clock and now the pitch is swung out and missed. Fastball that he blew right by McKinney. The board says 96. And now with a count of a ball and two strikes, the Clippers move three infielders to the right side of the infield. A triangle shift on. Chang at third moves to shortstop. Karen checks one two as a fastball to the screen. Two balls and two strikes. There's no doubt. This young man has a live, live arm. James Karinchak, Newburgh, New York native. 2 2 pitch. Right hander to McKinney. And the left handed batter swings and misses. 96 mile per hour fastball, two gone. He's phase three, he's fan three. And now Richard Urania to the plate. The switch hitting shortstop, a little bad left against the righty Karen Shack. Nearing the stretch here at Huntington Park. Here's the first pitch. Fastball up for ball one. Rania one for two today. The three hole hitter. And the ball one. Fastball outside, two and nothing. And now time is called, and Eric Haas is going to go to the mound. He and Karen Shack at 2 0 may not have been on the same page. And a quick meeting on the hill here at Huntington Park. Four runs, five hits with no errors, Columbus. They've left three. 
Three runs, six hits in air, and a half dozen left on base for Buffalo. Aaron Shack has struck out Davis and McKinney swinging. Behind the Urania 2 0, and the pitch is a fastball swung out and miss. He's living at 95 and 96 with that heater, and it's been overpowering here in the seventh. From the stretch. But nobody on. Here's a 2 1. Fastball away. Now it's three balls and a strike. Rowdy Telez is waiting on deck. Bison's trail in the seventh with two men gone. 4 3 Columbus. The flags that adorn the batter's eye and straightaway center right down the pole. There's no wind movement right now at all. Foul back and a full count. Karen Shack came with a heater and Urania went down and got it and made contact to run it full. He's faced three, he struck out three. And Urania waits on the two out payoff pitch. And Karen Shack steps off. Haas drops the sign, and here comes the 3-2. Foul ball off the bat handle and out of play to the left. He tried to jam him with an inside heater that time, and the count holds. Darren Shack swipes for a handful of Huntington Park Mount dirt. Now the stretch, 3-2 pitch, Urania, swing and a miss. He fooled him there, he struck him out, pulling the string on him, and the inning is over. He strikes out the side, and at the stretch, Clippers four, Bison's three. When we go to the home seventh inning, new pitcher is right-hander Neil Ramirez. Andrew Sopko for Buffalo, six innings, five hits, four runs, all earned two walks and five strikeouts. And now the former Columbus Clipper, released by the Indians just this month, a week ago, signed on by Toronto, and here he is in a Triple-A uniform with Buffalo, Neil Ramirez. Guy Tom has the go-ahead home run. It was a two-run shot of the fourth. Gave the Clippers a 4-3 lead. That's still the count as the clip show hit in the home seventh. Right-handed pitcher Ramirez, the left-handed batter, and Tom takes one at the knees, a strike. I'm digging for bio information on Mr. Ramirez, but the fact of the matter is the, the man to my left knows all about this right-hander. <laughs> well, he is... He's ball, had an strike. uneven season, I guess, is the way to say it. He started off the year with the Cleveland Indians and, and pitched okay at the Major League bullpen. But when a roster crunch came, he was the guy who was designated for assignment, accepted his outright to Columbus. And far more often than not, he pitched really well. One two Struck out a lot of batters. But home runs were a problem. Signed by Toronto to a minor league deal. Yeah, and I think this this outing, there may be one or two for him before probably being called up. Back with a one-two pitch. Pop foul out of play off the third base side. Yeah, it was part of the big roster turnover that happened for the Clippers right at the beginning of August. When the Indians made that trade, they put a couple of pieces on the major league roster that then trickle down and in some cases trickle out Ramirez and Trace Thompson both released Brandon Barnes traded to Minnesota he's with Rochester now Ramirez added today to Tom breaking ball is low and in two and two well, don't you always wonder though you've got a guy in Ramirez facing this lineup and 
He was just in this dugout a week ago. They know him. He knows them. And in more, more ways than uh, just on the pitcher's mound. As a person, as a teammate, as a friend, I'm sure to many. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a foul. Just nicked it at the plate. Tom hangs around at a holding 2-2 two -two count. And last year, Ramirez joined the Indians organization as a minor league free agent. Started in Columbus. Pitched well enough to earn a spot on the Indians 40-man and ultimately 25-man roster. So we saw basically in his Indians career the entire kind of rise and fall. Again, the 2-2. Tom gone swinging, hard-breaking ball in on his hands. One out. The nine-hole hitter, Eric Stamets, one out of two. Yeah, the Clippers are a first-place team, and, and they definitely have some of that to thank this man for. There's no doubt about it. Everybody that's worn a Clippers uniform this year has made a contribution to this club being where it is. Eight games clear of Indianapolis. They've struggled since the All-Star break. We know that. Worst record in the league over that time. But they have built up enough of a lead to weather this kind of a storm. Righty to righty, and Stamets takes a strike from Ramirez. Look at all the big league time this guy secured. Six years worth. Cub, Brewer, pitches outside there. One ball, one strike. A twin, a giant, a Met, an Indian last year and this year. Righty, Neil Ramirez. The 1 1. Bouncing ball hit to third, and it took a wicked hop on Burns, and it caroms off his glove into short left near the line. Big turn, Stamets heading for second. The throw late. He's in feet first, sliding safely. We'll see how it scored. It looked like a bad bounce up on Burns that then played off his glove into short left. Brito came in but threw late to second base, and Stamets in feet first at second base. It was an unorthodox swing for it Eric was. Stamets. And so I wonder if that contributed a different kind of English than Burns was expecting. Nice insurance run out there at second with one out here in the seventh inning. They put the hit up. That'll be a double. Jake Bowers now with a chance to add to the one run Columbus seventh inning lead. Bowers walked and scored into third is nothing out of two. Four three Columbus home seven Bowers to the uh, Bowers rather waiting on the pitch from Ramirez and takes a low ball one. Just under 10,000 here tonight. Gorgeous summer evening in Columbus. The pitch breaks away and stays down and it's one one on Jake Bowers. Buffalo outfield straight up. They're deep. The left handed Bowers waits on the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Ramirez threw a fastball up at his letters and a cut and a miss to make it 1 and 2. Well, Bowers is a guy who knows how to be patient at the plate. He's already drawn six walks in his brief time in a Clippers uniform. Helping to stretch out a pitcher, build up his pitch count. That helps everybody batting behind you. You get a good look at all the offerings as well. One two pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out on a 96 mile per hour heater. So Bowers overpowered by Ramirez for out two of inning seven. And here's Mark Mathias with two outs. Stamets at second. One of the problems with working those deep counts, you get to a lot of two strike counts, and you know, that's when the strikeouts happen too. And Neil Ramirez knows how to rack them up. Native of Virginia Beach, first pitch fastball is off the plate to the right handed batter, Matthias Bowl one. Mark with a knock back in the third, one for three. Clippers have collected six hits. Holding a one run lead, batting in the seventh, and the ball one. It's up 2 0. Oh.
2 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Fastball there, 2 and 1. Neil Ramirez was outrighted to Columbus on May 25th. On May 28th, the Clippers went to Norfolk. Right in his backyard. At home. I think Norfolk would be one of my top three or four stops along the circuit. Never bad at the beach, right? No, no, your your stones throw from Virginia Beach. I mean, not quite that. You gotta <laughs> you gotta jump in the car, but it's reachable. Two one, swing and a miss. Two and two. Older ballpark for sure, but with the Elizabeth River in the backdrop, it's it's a gorgeous setting. Downtown's pretty good. It is. You get nice. Uh, well, the mermaid statues. Spot. You yeah. can take pictures of and send back home. Take a tour of the SS Wisconsin. 2-2 two, two to Matthias with two outs. Fastball is up and a ball three. Three and two. Full count on Matthias with Flaherty next. Now, of course, in your years in the International League, you called Louisville home, and that's another great stop. So much to do there in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. Fun city. I enjoyed it. Payoff pitch. Took something off that one and it's fly ball into short center playable towards left center field the center fielder Davis calls off the left fielder Brito. That's an F8 to end the seventh. We go to the eighth in Columbus. Clippers still maintain a 4-3 lead. <laughs> Moving to the eighth inning in Columbus. Clippers have a one run lead. Here to bring you home with a new Columbus pitcher on the mound. It's Ryan Mitchell. All right, Matty, thank you very much. Phil Mayton on the hill. Rowdy Telez, Patrick Kevlahan, and Andy Burns. Four, five, and six in the batting order. Home run threats all, and that is dangerous in a one-run game. That's where we're at right now. Four to three Clippers on top. Mayton just back on the roster yesterday, 26 years of age, out of Paducah, Kentucky. Rowdy Telez, big left handed batter. First pitch is a swing and a foul. For strike one. Peyton was recalled to the major leagues the other day as the 26th man for the Cleveland Indians in the doubleheader, though he didn't pitch. A one is on the outside corner for a called strike. Tremendous success this year in AAA for El Paso. Struggled in the bigs for San Diego before the trade. Cash deal. Next pitch. Break the ball, misses the outside corner. 6'3, 220 pound right hander. Last year, double A, triple A, and the Bigs. And he was dynamite for the Padres. Here comes the one two, and it's another breaking ball swung on and fouled away. Telez, as I said, a dangerous man. Mayton now has a lot of company as a former San Diego Padre or Padre farm hand here with the Indians. Break ball here, rising line drive over the leaping third baseman, Yu Chang, who was playing in the overshift. It will be just a single for Telez as they get it back to the infield very quickly. Is Patrick Kivlahan. Kivlahan is 0 for 3 on the day. Takes a slider outside. One ball, no strikes.
Oohs and ahs going up in the crowd. The Zuper Stars still finishing off the night of entertainment here at Huntington Park. Next pitch. Over but low, a curve, 2-0. Middle infield in double play position. Breaking ball in a dandy in for a called strike over the inside corner, two and one. As I mentioned, pitched for San Diego in 2018, made his major league debut in 2017. It's a swing and a miss at a fastball in on the hands here, two and two. And pitched a lot. 46 games in 2017, 45 last year, 21 this year, along with his time in El Paso. Here's the kick in his 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed strike three. That'll do away with Kiplahan. More than a strikeout per inning as a major leaguer and way more than a strikeout per inning in the minors. 149 minor league innings, 229 strikeouts. That'll do. First pitch swing and Andy Burns fouls away the first pitch. And it is 0-1. 4-3 Clippers on top in the front half of inning number eight. Opening game of a three-game series. Set by the righty. Now the kick in the pitch and a breaking ball swung on and missed. When that breaking ball is working that way, it's okay that his fastball doesn't exactly light up the radar gun. Because you can't really settle in on any one thing. Now the 0-2. Ground ball towards the shortstop. That should get the job done. 6-4, to 4-3. Four, four to Twin kill beautifully done. That's the end of the top of the eighth inning. No runs, one hit. Bases left empty. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Clippers on top, 4-3. to three. New pitcher on. Danny Young takes the hill for the bottom of the eighth inning. Clippers will send three, four, and five to the plate. Neil Ramirez faced four, got three. Two on strikes, gave up a double, but no runs. Ryan Flaherty to lead things off. Flaherty single driving in a run back in the third inning. He's one for three. Ryan Mitchell and Matt Andrews with you tonight from Huntington Park. Beautiful night. Clippers in the lead looking for insurance. First pitch he has a breaking ball in the lefty lefty matchup over the outside corner for a called strike. Young, 6'3, 200 pounder out of Boynton Beach, Florida. Delivers low and away. Spent all of last season in double A with the New Hampshire Fisher Cats. Eighth round pick by the Blue Jays back in 2015. His 1 1 delivery he is inside. Flaherty has kind of been the Swiss Army knife for the Clippers this year. He's played all four infield positions. He has pitched when need be. The 2 1 is a breaking ball up and in, three balls and a strike. Batting all over in the order and just doing the job. Leads the team in RBIs. 39 extra base hits. The 3-1, and he serves this one toward left center field, charging hard, but taking it on a bounce is Jonathan Davis. He's gotten to just about everything tonight, but Davis couldn't get to that one. And Flaherty is aboard with a leadoff single. Brings up Yu Chang, 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score. Chang in the cleanup spot. 
And I chronicled his numbers in that spot in the order. Got an opportunity to do something here. First pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Young did not face the Clippers in the first series on the season in just six appearances since his promotion. 0-1 with a 9 ERA. Next pitch, swung on and missed 0-2. Six runs on seven hits, all earned in six innings. He's walked six and struck out six. That's too many base runners. The 0-2. Ball bearing in on Chang, actually found the bat. He wasn't trying to swing, but he fouled it away. Still 0-2. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball there. And Chang is down on strikes. There's Bobby Bradley held in check today, 0 for 3 with a strikeout, a flyout, and reached on an E3, but then eliminated on a double play. 28 homers for the big fella. Clippers looking for some insurance here. No activity right now in the bullpen. Big swing and a miss. Boy, he does not get cheated on those swings. Comes up empty, though, 0 and 1. Left-handed pitcher stares at first base. Now kicks and fires and misses low. Fastball at 90, one and one. Cleveland Indians now up four to nothing on Minnesota. Jose Ramirez, eight straight games with an extra base hit. Had an RBI double. Is he back? I don't know if he's back. But they might just run away and hide from Minnesota. They're playing like they are at a whole different level right now. 2 1 pitch, fastball swung on and missed 2 and 2. Best record in baseball since the end of May. Best manager in baseball. He's pushing the right buttons. Overshift on against Bradley. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. And it's in there for a called third strike. Backward K hung on Bradley. Two down now. The runner at first base. And Daniel Johnson to the plate. Yeah, the right fielder, number two, DJ Johnson. Cleveland Indians. As the calendar was getting later and later into May. Looked like they were in the midst of a lost season. Johnson swings and misses strike one June 2nd which nobody knew at that time that they had gotten hot they were ten and a half games back and the season appeared to be over the rotation was what seemed to be in shambles Kluber was out Clevenger was out Carrasco was out Adam Plutko at the time was not pitching particularly well filling in in the rotation and then something just clicked. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and fouled away. And it wasn't any one player. And I think Tyler Clippard said it the other day. He was quoted as saying, we, ne we may not have the most talent in the league, but I firmly believe we are the best team in baseball right now. It's hard to argue. They're winning more than anybody. They dug themselves a big hole trying to dig out of it. And if they win tonight, it's a sprint to the finish. They're all even with Minnesota. Pitch to Johnson is down two and two. Bullpen has done yeoman's work this season. Here's the two two and it's fouled away. And oh by the way you look at guys like Plutko who's tuned, turned things around. Zach Putnam who nobody expected to do anything in the major league level this year. Aaron Savalli has made two major league starts and allowed one run in 12 innings. Everybody that is filled in has done their job properly. 2-2, two, two, no, throw to first. Two days ago they used bullpen. Bullpen game. game two. <laughs> Second game of a doubleheader 
trying to run down the Minnesota Twins. That happens here all the time, but not at that No, level. not up there. But fortunately, the first game, the bullpen was very lightly used. 2-2. Two -two. High chopper towards second base, playing back on a big hop. Now the throw is spiked, and everybody's safe. Santiago Espinal went back and tried to do the Jeter throw across the body, but held on to it too long and only threw it about 10 feet. It rolled the rest of the way to first. I guess that's a base hit. It was going to be a tough play to get Johnson regardless. Well, the ball just essentially thrown to the ground as opposed to over to the bag. And Slipped out of his hand, and that is scored ahead, I believe. So they are at first and second now for Eric Haas, and boy, he could give you some insurance in a heartbeat. Pitch to him is a fastball down. Three runs, seven hits, one error. Six stranded for Buffalo. Four, eight, zero, and four for the Clippers. Haas waggles the bat as he waits on Young to come set. He does. He pitches, and it's swung on and missed one and one. Haas has hit six of his 27 homers against left-handers this year. His home run rate is far better against right-handers. The 1-1. One -one. Down and in, good take. Two balls and a strike. Six homers in 93 at bats against Southpaws. 21 homers in 204 against righties. That's better than one out of 10. Mm. That's good. Two on, two out the pitch. He smacks it down the left field line. It's a foul ball. Just got out in front. I don't know if he broke his bat. It sounded like it. And yes, he did. <laughs> he was running up the first baseline in case it was fair. Once it was foul, he just bent off his route, went right to the dugout to grab a new piece of lumber. He's got a pine tar to his liking. Eric is a really, really stalwart defensive catcher. He is one of the best catch and throw men in the International League over the last couple of years. And all kind of power to go along with it at the plate. Opportunity here to do some damage. Clippers up four to three and looking for more. In the bottom of the eighth inning. Here's the two-two once more. And this one's nubbed foul into the left-handed batter's box. We'll do it again. Bullpen quiet. Looks like Mayton will get the ninth. He's on for James Karinchak, who faced four and fanned them all. Kyle Nelson, I believe, is the pitcher of record. There's a high fly ball to right field, not deep. Coming on and making the catch now for out number three. And that'll do it for the Clippers. We go to the ninth. Last chance for Buffalo. Columbus strands a couple of base runners. And now they're trying to slam the door in game one of this three-game set. We're back after this. We go to the ninth here at Huntington Park. It's copyrighted broadcast. It's presented by the authority of the Columbus Clippers. May not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Columbus Clippers. In other words, don't do it. Don't do it. Do not do it. A little sick Marvin Dill on you. You don't want that. Oh. Oh. Phil Mayton back out there, misses with the first offering to Socrates Brito for ball one. Brito, De La Cruz, and Espinal do up. 
Bottom third of the order for the Buffalo Bisons. They trail the Clippers by a run. Four to three in the ninth. Here's the pitch. And it misses inside. Two balls, no strikes. Rob Kaminsky getting loose down bullpen way for the Clippers, the left-hander. Infield shading slightly to the pull side, and that'll work. A ground ball to the second baseman who was positioned perfectly. Matthias goes down to a knee, scoops it up, throws to first. That's out number one. It's amazing how these positioning charts are far more often than not right on the money. Michael De La Cruz is 0 for a couple. Sack Bunt, his first time up. Takes a pitch high and away. The 1-0 pitch to him is fouled away. Interesting maybe that with two left-handers due up and Kaminsky down the bullpen. They elected to start this inning with Maiden. Right-hander due up next, Espinal. And then a slate of lefties. 1-1. Swung on and missed a ball and two. Now, De La Cruz is a switch hitter, so he would have batted right-handed had Kaminsky come in. The one two offering is a breaking ball for a cold third strike on the outside corner. And the Cruz is put away. The base is empty. Santiago Espinal to the plate. He had his first triple A hit back in the second inning, an RBI double since then. He has popped out and struck out. Yu Chang on the line at third. Everybody else playing pretty much straight up on the infield. The outfield is deep. Heels to the warning track type deep. No doubles defense here against Espinal. First pitch a strike, the next coming. It is tap foul. And now the Clippers one strike away from starting this series off on the good foot. Nine thousand seven hundred eighty-seven. Eight attendance here at Huntington Park tonight. Here's the kick and the pitch and a breaking ball. First base side, ground ball just fair. Fielded by Bobby Bradley. He will take it to the bag for out number three. And the Clippers beat the Buffalo Bisons in four to three fashion. All the runs scored pretty early tonight. And the Wolfpins did the job the rest of the way. We'll be back after this. Clippers, four runs on eight hits and no errors. Better than Buffalo tonight. Three runs, seven hits, and one error. The Bison stranded six on base, but the Clippers' bullpen did the job. The win tonight will go to Kyle Nelson, and the loss is hung on the starter for the Buffalo Bison.